Hello there. I haven't done any videos for a while because there's been nothing worth videoing, sadly. But uh, on the bench in front of you, uh, me today, we have um, what is called a line isolating transformer. And basically, it's a way of having a floating ground on the output of a signal source if you want to have an isolated ground on your signal source on an audio amplifier or something similar and they're used for hum suppression and stuff like that and basically what it is it's uh, two phono inputs and two phono outputs and a little box with a transformer in it because if you draw out the uh, actual circuit of it you'd have a transformer for one channel left channel and another transformer for the right channel and you'd have your input primary and your secondary which of course would be a one-to-one -one. Yeah, because you want the same output as on the input. It's so that's what the basic circuit diagram of it. And whereas on the input, one of your connections will be earth, or can be earth, with your signal going in there and signal there. On the output, they're floating, so there is no earth connection. And the reason I needed. I thought to do this was um, I was testing this class D amplifier and because of the way class D amplifiers work you cannot connect a scope on to, to the output with the earth lead of the scope connected to across the amplifier output because it's a um, it's a differential output rather than a common ground output as you would get maybe on a class uh, class AB amplifier, normal class AB or class A or whatever but um, yeah class D amplifiers are, are differential outputs so if you connect a scope across the, t the outputs and you've got a signal generator which is also connected to the same ground as the scope you will cause severe trouble in your class D amplifier. Of course, one way around that would be to use my my homemade differential probe, which has two input wires, but and they're not connected to earth. And what that does is it just measures the voltage between those two connections and neither of them are earthed and the output comes out as a single ended normal output which you can plug into an earthed scope but I've never been terribly happy with this thing I built it a few years ago and it works off for a fashion but it's got limited frequency response and it's also it tends to pick up a lot of noise on these cables but that's beside the point so I thought, well, it's easier to use a, a normal scope with an earth connection, but as I said, um, you can only do that if you isolate the inputs from the signal generator. In fact, in the end, when I was testing these amplifiers last week, I'd, I used my mobile phone in the end because it's got an app on there with a signal generator and of course there's no earth reference then but I'd rather use my proper signal generator up there which is turned off at the moment so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wire this thing up and see how good it is see what its frequency response is like and stuff like that you know it's well I use my um, HP audio analyzer to do that so I just connect it all up
What I've done now is I've connected the output from the HP. That's the output signal, which has got a 600 ohms impedance output. Although you can select 50 ohm, but 600 ohms is more standard with the audio. And the other end of that little transformer is connected to the input over there. And I've set the audio analyzer up um, to one kilohertz, which you can see up there. And I set it to one volt output. But I'm already seeing a loss through the uh, transformer. Because if you got if I short remove the transformer and short out these two, you'll see it's exactly one volt. So there is some loss through the transformer with a 600 ohm load on the uh, on the output of the transformer. Of course, in um, an audio amplifier, you probably wouldn't have such a problem because it would be a higher impedance, like um, 10k, 50k, whatever. But um, now I want to do the frequency response of this device. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a bit. And I really ought to get a better, um, less creaky camera mount. But anyway, so what I do is I switch this into ratio mode. And then it's saying 100%. <coughs> and now I can switch it into, log, into logarithmic. So I'm measuring dB now. So it's basically showing that at 1 kilohertz, there's 0 dB loss. That's the reference. So now I'm going to go down right down to 20 hertz. So frequency 20 hertz. No frequency at hertz yet, right. And I can already see I've got a minus 4.7 dB of loss through the transformer at 20 hertz. Well, that may not be a problem because, as I said, into a high impedance, rather than 600 ohms, it might not be such a bad um, loss. But anyway, I just want to get an idea of the frequency response of the transformer, as I said. So if I go up in frequency, uh, no, don't want to do that. Frequency increments, uh, 10 hertz. So, 30 hertz it goes down to minus 3 40 minus 2.6 50 minus 2.2 60 and so on and so on up to 90 and then 100 100 is minus 1.24 so it's starting to get more flat now now I think I have to increase my uh, step sizes so I do times 10 for that and I do 200 hertz minus 0.6 so it's getting a lot flatter and a lot less lossy now 300, 400, 500, 600 it's basically flat now from 700, 800, 900 and 1k again this thing never reads exactly right even though you set 1k it always comes up with some silly number which is not quite what you set, set it for I don't think it's a fault, I think it's just the way the thing works. Anyway, I can go up higher now. So I have to do times 10 again for the frequency in increments. I've got to 2k and it's actually got an increase. So it's actually amplifying slightly, or not amplifying as such, but it's producing more output than input. 3k, 0.17 plus 0.17 dB and 4k, 0.2, 5k, 6, 7, it's fairly flat though, fairly flat, 9k, 10k, and I'll take it up to 20k, do times 10 again, no I don't want to do times 10 do I, 11k, ah oh, now we've got 0.42 plus 0.42 coming out of it, so Keep going, 13, half a dB up, 15, still half a dB, 16, 17, 18, 19, and I'll stop at 20, and it's 0.72 dBs high. So, well, that's, that's nothing much really, is it? I mean, it's 
basically more or less flat from about 100 hertz I think it was let's try it again 100 hertz no it's minus one at 100 hertz but minus one dB isn't it's, it's not a massive amount what would that be in um, percent, percentage 86 percent so you get 86 percent of the signal out at 100 hertz okay if I turn that off see it's down to 0.8 volts now where I'm inputting 1 volt I'm getting 0.8 volts out at 100 hertz well, I don't think that's a major problem it's just for testing really and it doesn't have to be super accurate so back to ratio and whatever and of course now it's standardized its readings on the, on 100 hertz so back to 1 K and 1K. So I think 20 hertz is the worst, but it would be down the low end. So that, that was always going to be a bad reading. Minus 4.7 dB. Well, you're going to have some roll off at the low end on the transformer. But anyway, that's the end of the test, and I'm sure it'll be fairly useful this little device for testing things like class D amplifiers and um, it wasn't very expensive does it go on there it is I think it cost me six pound so at least it enables me to use a proper scope probe on the output without damaging the amplifier and stuff like that so that's the end of this video so bye for now